Welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, Ms. Sheena Godan, author of The Mask Behind the Mask. She'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide you useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like I said, I have a very special guest for you. This book right here interests you, The Mask Behind the Mask. Well, Ms. Sheena Godine is actually the author. She's with us here tonight. Sheena, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's great to have you. I love having authors. I love having women authors in the chair um women so power women empowerment you know we got a we got a sisterhood we got to stay in the movement together um but it's great i really think you're doing some great things but before we even dive into the book who is sheena Gadan? we want to know about you you as the person before the journey okay before the journey well i got my ba in sociology at morris college i'm originally from south carolina i've moved up here about may of 03 so I've been out here oh, about almost 17 years yeah, now. So this is time. like home. Yeah. But South Carolina, cross South Carolina will always be my stumping ground. Okay. Okay. Um, I used to play basketball. I love writing poetry since the age of 12. And I just like helping people. Okay. Well, that's interesting because you said you started writing poetry at the age of 12. So you kind of, that means you always had that. It came naturally for yeah. you. How would you say coming up as a child you know sometimes you know not that we don't have that support unit but you start dabbling in certain things and if you don't have your parents to kind of guide you what what were your parents initial thoughts on some of your writings thinking back you know it's crazy I don't think I even shared my poetry as much when I was little because it was like a private thing so like mm -hmm. to actually have it out now is like oh my god they're reading my journal almost mm -hmm. but um I think my mom, I finally actually introduced my mom to my poetry actually as I got older mm -hmm. instead of when I was younger. That was my safe haven. It was my way of keeping, you know, my, my thoughts to myself, what I didn't tell nobody. How were you as a child? How, was, <laughs> how were you personality-wise with your friends? And it's different growing up, and in, in, I love how on the back of the book you actually, you know, made sure to put small town. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's clearly something important to you yeah so um, growing that. up I went to school a lot like you know how people in the summertime they go on vacations I actually was in school I did like the uh, enrichment programs and I played basketball and I watched basketball and I played with my cousins like that town is pretty much was family hmm. I went to church lunch you know you know how you get the the school lunch we got the church we went I went to the church to get the free lunch mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know riding in the back of the truck working in the fields we had chickens, hogs. Yeah, it's, it's really country. Dirt oh, roads, wow. No street lights. Really dark. Crickets. <laughs> yeah. Country life. Country, country life. Okay. Um, Would you say that shaped your writing in any way? I could say. I could say it definitely could because that was like, you know, how most people go outside. Besides playing double dutch, I wrote. So mm -hmm. that just curved me to just mold me to do what I do now. Do you still have memories of your very first piece or your first few pieces? I do. They were they were actually shorter. Like I I I actually spent time less. It was like more of me like hi, I love you. She's beautiful. You know, just simple stuff. Wow. <laughs> what was your ultimate career choice coming up before you even decided? Um and, and I love kind of tapping it because we all look back like, I'm going to be an astronaut or I'm going to do this. And, you know, life hits you real hard. Or you're so far f from that. But it's okay because it allows you to just be you and be free. Definitely. Um, I remember first grade, I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to and be a nurse you know at first. you know Caribbean in you? <laughs> <laughs> I might. I told you down the line somewhere. Down the line. But at first, I wanted to be a nurse, and then I remember, I think it had to be about third grade, I wanted to be a lawyer. Like, oh, maybe I could be a lawyer. You know, I like to tell people what to do, and I like mm -hmm. to be in control. Why not take control of the court? 
But then as I got older and everybody wanted to come to me for advice and, uh, you know, they wanted to ask me questions or, Sheena, what do you think about this? I'm like, well, my next option would be social worker. So then that's how I got into having my BA in sociology. So then coming up here, I just then I ended up starting to work for the Center for Disability Services. I did that for about three years. And I was a manager, so I worked with people and just dealing with people that couldn't help themselves. But we had to teach them how to live in society. Wow. How was that experience? It, it, was, it was definitely interesting. I did it for about three years, and it felt like my life was revolved around that place because as being a manager, because, well, okay, I started off as an overnight counselor. Within six months, I moved up to be the assistant manager. Uh, being a manager is like being a system manager is like being in between the staff and your management. Mm -hmm. So it's like they, there was no sleep time. It was twenty four seven. I was a part of there. If people wasn't, if they wasn't coming in, I was then the one they called. So it was like I was managing already. So that's how I kind of manage myself now. I had to schedule stuff. I schedule myself now. I had to put people in certain places to be a certain amount of people in the house so this takes me to how I manage myself with my book now oh, oh yeah we're gonna get into <laughs> all of that um, and you did that for three years yep did that for three years what was the next step after that then I went to the fire and water restoration company so that's also helping people like we did that and you know we go in people's houses and if they had a fire we then clean up the house so that it wow. get back to normal so they can live a normal life so you've dealt with people who have really went through some real situations and the, and one of the biggest things about any especially counseling social work when you people are looking to you for that guidance that help a listening ear it does suck your energy though it does but you still have to put on that face because for you, it might be their first time experiencing that situation. You've talked to a hundred other people going through the same thing and you just be cold or not kind of desensitized. But how did you manage to still keep yourself like who was your go to person when uh, you needed? Mm, I would say I have a best friend. Her name is Sarita. I, that was definitely my go to. Like, when I needed to you talk... Shit, girl, did you hear the story? <laughs> you know we're not... So it's all confidential, yeah, but you know, it's like, like you gotta have that one you know, person yeah, that's definitely. like... And you don't believe who just came, like... Yeah. Definitely. Like, that or... At the time, whoever I was dating, my partner. That was my... That was my, you know, my exit. Mm -hmm. That was my way of, you know, what I need to release what's going on with me. So, those were my go-tos at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. But that's important. Yeah. So you enjoyed and and still do yeah. enjoy that aspect of helping people in social yeah. work. And does that still come through your writing? It does because my book is motivating, empowering, mm -hmm. inspiring. And I give back now. Like I go back to the domestic violence shelters and give them the conversation like I've been there. So being I've been there, let me help you to unmask some of the things that you're masking behind as far as not knowing, you, knowing where your courage is anymore or not being able to feel that your self-esteem is still there and you just don't know where your power is. Absolutely. Well, hold that taught. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. So, Sheena, the mask behind the mask. Let's talk about it. And you know everything about this book. <laughs> because, first of all, I'm everyone who knows me knows I love carnival and I love masquerade masks. So when I saw this, I was like, okay. Definitely, even though it's not a carnival book, by no means. <laughs> but it struck me, the title, the mask behind the mask. You never think about, there might be a mask behind the mask. So how did you come up with the name? I came up with the title after dealing with so many different people and different energy and just how they are. And as you deal with people, they give you one face. 
And then as you continue to deal with them, you learn the other faces that they have. Mm -hmm. So just learning people, dealing with people, attitudes, emotions, all the above, you learn that people carry a lot of masses that you don't know about until you actually really be around them long enough. So as a, as a professional, I could ask this on a professional level, and I think this might even be relevant to our viewers. What do you think is a decent time frame? When you first start dating somebody, because they, they say, you know, men and women alike, you know, mm -hmm. try to put your best face forward. Yeah. Well, hold the attitude back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Guys might pretend. And it's not even pretending, just you're just trying to be a nicer. You're not going to let your guard down or let fully. You got a wall up. Got that little wall up. You may not want to actually show that side of you. You may not know you have a temper or no, you have a short <laughs> fuse. Because that could scare people too early. True. So, what has been, the first part of the question, how many masks do you think the average person wears? Oof. And All when right. do they start to <laughs> slowly come down? Or is it, that an individual thing? See, it's an individual thing because everybody's different. Like, with me, I could say I don't really wear masks anymore. I carry them because we all have to put a face on for something. Yep. But I give in full detail who I am. And I really like that. I carry them. I really like that. I really yeah. like that a lot. You have to learn to carry them and not always put them on. Yeah. Because, you know, you have to, just like you have your, you see a 212 number pop it, you get the nice telephone mm -hmm. voice. So you know it's a, like, might, be a, might be a Manhattan number, but, you know, see 646. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So. But people wear a lot of different masks. Because, like, say you had a rough day before you came here. But you had to put a face on to work with me. So it just depends on the person. Depends on what they're dealing with. Depends on what may be going on. Depends on just individuals in general because they could be carrying masses from childhood. Wow. That they just haven't let go yet. So then they carry all that all their life. So they got all these different masses that have built up on top of that. I didn't think of that. So the mask behind the mask. So that's, that covers the name. I love how it's... This is this could be an easy read. Seeing that it's not a lot of pages, but that doesn't mean that you might have to reread a couple things to, to get it. Get so it. let's, let's kind of dissect the book a little bit. Okay. So how did it get started? Well, it opens up, you know, mask behind the mask. You have your introduction. Worry of my strengths on page one. What is that about? That is about me being a warrior through my storm. Between the chronic illness, the mental things that you deal with, the emotional, the domestic violence that I dealt with, I had to become a warrior for my kids. So, And these are all poems, correct? Yes, it's all, all poems. All right, so just so everybody knows, <laughs> it's not a fictional story. These are, are poems. Um, how do you describe your poetry style, though? It can be a little raw sometimes and kind of straight to the point. Like, I'm here to motivate you, but I ain't going to go through 20 different lines to get there. You might got maybe 10 lines and just getting you to the point. Like, all right, we're here. We're going to do this. Either you're going to cry about it, you're going to stand still, or you're going to move on. I, I kind of get, like, rap in my head a little <laughs> bit. No, because it's like, I'm going to spit a couple bars. <laughs> but sometimes you have to do that, yeah. you know. Because there's the, the Japanese style of, you know, the haiku, and there's all these mm -hmm. lyrical, rhythmic way of doing it. So, it's kind of interesting. Um, and to know that you survived domestic violence and could put this to use your pen. Yeah. Do you still physically write or you prefer to type? No, I still write. I write it first, then I type it. It's because it comes out better when I'm writing it. It's that physical form, mm -hmm. the pen and the paper. It just it just flows better. I am. What about that? That was definitely me letting it be known. I am who I am and love me for who I am because I love who I am. I love it. Power. I needed to get my power back. So, hmm. in order to gain my power, I had to let myself know I was powerful. So, while I'm letting people know that they're powerful, I'm motivating them. Like, listen, you've been through this. 
but you got the power in order to move on. You have the power to be a better version of you and not stand and be stuck in the standstill of what life gave you. We all mm. get a deck of cards. Don't mean that that have to be your final game. I'm getting lyrics. <laughs> I love it. Without you. That's... Ooh, I got a smile. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting poem. Actually, it was about somebody I was with, but I'm okay without you. And that's always... And that's something I, I kind of say, too. You know, it's okay to show feelings. It's okay to be honest about how you feel. And it's not a sign of weakness. If you want to take it as that, that's on you. Yeah doesn't mean by any means that I'm stupid exactly. because I will let you go correct doesn't mean I'm not gonna think about you doesn't mean I'm not gonna miss you but I will let you go still yeah like listen we here but you can be over there <laughs> absolutely <laughs> love sores that actually I wrote after my grandma passed uh she passed a year ago and actually awesome. I wrote that right after her funeral about a month later I was just laying in the bed and it just came to me and it's basically you can either take it as somebody passing somebody that's there around you because love soars all around you so it's like she's my angel she's there she's watching me she's protecting me regardless of anything i know she's there so i love soars all around <laughs> i love it miracle i would say miracle came when i was definitely going through a hard time and I needed a miracle so I wrote that when I was dealing with the domestic violence because it's like I was praying for a miracle to get out of it it's like you know what I'm my kids protector I need a miracle to get them out of this and I will never go back that direction ever again mm -hmm. so you did I did um I saw one that I really I really like, but we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to finish dissecting these guys. Okay. This is an awesome book. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. back you're watching beyond focus tv i'm lydia patel so shanna why don't you tell us about satisfying you <laughs> mm -hmm. that honestly was me talking about somebody satisfying that every inch of my mind my body and my soul because hmm. when a person go through something you're dealing with all those emotions so you want somebody to love you from every inch to whatever's going on with you because it can be hard after you done deal with a few things. It, it takes a scoring person to deal with an individual that been through a journey. Absolutely. So satisfying you is definitely to get people to understand. You have to satisfy people from, from everything, from the mental to the emotional to the physical. And that's, that's really, I think, if you complete all those things. Because I've had people who just took care of the emotional. Yeah. But I wasn't physically attracted to them. Yeah. The ones I'm physically attracted to were terrible for my emotions, my feelings, just your whole spirit. Yeah. And I, I would pray about, can you get one person with everything? everything. It's interesting because sometimes when you think you have everything, that's not the person that's honestly for you. It's always the opposite of what you really want is what's for you. Yeah. And see, we, we, we thread on that line of wanting something mm -hmm. instead of getting what we really need. Yeah. Because it's the main one that might be quirky and nerdy and all these things that some of us don't want. But yep. that's what you need because they got everything. So it's just, it's just finding the person that fits into your puzzle. Two more I'm going to tackle with you. Okay. Time. Time. I wrote time because the thing about it is time is precious. And a lot of us tend to not basically respect people's time. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I wrote it because it was a time where, you know, you had people say, oh, I'm coming here or, oh, let's go do this. And it doesn't happen on those bases because people felt that something else was more important. Oh, we're supposed to be going on a date and they found something else to be doing. So time is precious. So I Absolutely. wrote about time. And it's you. Yeah. It's you. <laughs> um, it's you. I wrote that because it was actually about somebody that it was them. It was about them. We were never together. But it's you. Hmm. So you know how you have that crush? Mm-hmm. And it's about that crush that I had that I never had that I never got to date. Got it. Those would be the best ones. They just remain in your head. Yeah, that's it. You can't mess it up because nope. Never got the opportunity exactly. to, to tarnish what you had in your head. Exactly. That is awesome. I I love this book. Are you self published? I am. How let everyone know at home, how do we get in contact with you to be able to get the book? Where is it available? Well, it's available on Amazon, it's on Barnes and Nobles, it's on Walmart.com, it's on all the platforms. Wow, if you that's, Google that's me, really it's really good. And if otherwise, if you want to contact me, you can contact me on Facebook at Sheena Godine. It's spelled S H A N A G O U R D I N E. Or you can contact me on Instagram at Testimony for Life. Or you can find me on Twitter at W underscore Godine. That is amazing. Um, we're going to have all that at the bottom of the screen. So, you know, usually a lot of people, when they write their first book, it's not the end of their journey. So what are you working on next? I'm working on book two, but I also do plays as well. What it is is I'm an opening speaker for this play called Secrets. I've done the first two. The first one was February 23rd. The second one was uh, June 29th. And the third one is about to be October 26th. So between that and doing events, and um, because I throw events for people to come and get motivated, you know, so do that. And then also, I am, what am I about to do? I have so much going on. A lot. I know. We're preparing for 2020. (laughs) Yeah. A couple of events are preparing for 2020 as well. But definitely, um, I have a couple of things under wraps that I haven't ready to reveal yet. No worries. Love it. We'll follow you on social. Yes, follow sure me on my social media. All your contacts. <laughs> How do you stay inspired and, and keep content <laughs> fresh? My kids is interesting. So How old are your kids? They are seven to eight. Liana and Samira, Gadon Walker, my babies. They they are definitely, they keep me inspired because they, they keep my mind going. Because, mm-hmm. like, like, with them going to school, they deal with bullying and different mm-hmm. things and you know, I have to talk to them about boyfriends and, you know, just all things in the world. So they keep my mind fresh just running and rolling. In society, keep your mind rolling anyway. Two girls, so it's... That too. Are they similar or completely... With them, it's kind of interesting. One is really, really busy. And then another one, she can be busy, but then she tends to be quiet. She gets in her own space. Mm-hmm. My oldest... She's one, she, she's into the music. She wants to dance. She would have played the guitar. She wants to, you know, do all the things. My money youngest. Spend money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the older, the baby want to spend money too. She wants to do um, uh, gymnastics. Mm-hmm. And she, she wants to step. And, you know, but they all have their own little yep. attitudes and, and, you know, versions of them. But then here they go. As soon as, as soon as I mess with one, oh, don't mess with my sister. So, you know, they might be different, but they the same. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Any final words that you want for the viewers that you want the Beyond Focus family to know about? Um, be it about the book, anything overall? Um, Overall, it's a great book. Everybody said they're inspired, they're motivated, they're empowered. So people out there, just stay empowered, motivated, and go for your dream. Just to hear you say that this book is available, not just on Amazon, not saying it's not hard to get on Amazon, but when you say Walmart, Barnes and Nobles, those are legitimate, um, really good outlets to have your book. And I know it's not easy to get up there. It's a lot of work, and I'm still trying to work. I'm trying to trying to be number one. So everybody go get the book so I can be number one bestseller. All right, get the... Get the mask behind, behind the, the mask. mask, all the poetry. It's a lot of great stuff. I'm actually excited to get to read some of these because the titles I rattled off to you are the ones that struck me. I just look at names. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, there's something about that. 
So I think um, it's going to be a great read. It is. It's just gone. I'm telling you. You're going to be like, ooh. And we're going to have you back. I would love to have you back, hear more about what you're doing, other okay. projects you're working on. Okay. So got to support each other. Yes. And, of course, all your social media is at the bottom of the screen. You can go ahead and check her out. Um, a lot of great things. Would it be a soul, your next project poetry-based as well? It's poetry, but maybe a little information on my secrets that I revealed during my play. So in order to know what they are, you got to read the book. It's a whole movement. Yeah, definitely. I love it. That's why I call it Sheena a master motivation. There you go. There we go. And the quote says, in order to be your true self, you have to unmask yourself. That's it. That's it. That is truly amazing. I, lo- I didn't even notice the t-shirt <laughs> before, but you know, you have a whole brand going on. Yes. You have to brand yourself. Yeah. So people go out and brand yourself. Absolutely. Sheena, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back again next week. Same time, same place you're watching. Beyond Focus TV, stay with us. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you. We really look forward to hearing from you.